God showed Ezekiel, in symbolic language, what was to take place in the last days, the finishing work of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. In vision, God took Ezekiel from his home to Jerusalem, to the temple of the Lord. There God proceeded to show Ezekiel the abominations being done there. After each abomination, God would say, Thou shalt see greater abominations. Now the last and greatest abomination was, And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces towards the east, and they worshipped the sun towards the east. Now this prophecy of Ezekiel is speaking of the last days. This means that sun worship will be standing in the place of worshiping God in these days. What is sun worship today? Here we see from the History Channel's website that Sunday observance is sun worship, the gradual process towards Christian tradition and ritual was underscored in 321, when on the 7th of March, Constantine decreed that Die Solis, or the Day of the Sun, should be observed as a universal day of rest. The pious observance of the Sabbath was important in expressing thanks to God's toil, and showed difference to the claim that God rested on the seventh day of the creation. For the true Sabbath of Christ our Creator is the seventh day. That is the day He hallowed and asked us to remember to keep it holy. There are true Christians in every church who do not know the origins of the Sunday Sabbath, and they believe that they are keeping the day which God sanctified and blessed. This is true of worshipers even in the Catholic Church. And while this ignorance and integrity remains, God accepts their sincerity, but when the light shall fall upon their pathway, God requires them to come into harmony with His law and to the Sabbath of His appointing. This prophecy of the greatest abomination shown in Ezekiel is also spoken of by Daniel the prophet. An arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and they shall take away the daily sacrifice and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. Christ also spoke of this prophecy, but as a dual application of the destruction of Jerusalem and of the end of time. But when ye see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him who readeth understand. Then let him that be in Judea flee to the mountains. As the siege of Jerusalem by the Roman armies was the signal for flight of the Judean Christians, so the assumption of power on the part of our nation in the decree enforcing the papal Sabbath will be a warning to us. It will then be time to leave the large cities preparatory to leave the smaller ones, for retired homes and secluded places among the mountains. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and in their foreheads, and that no man might buy nor sell, save he that hath the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. But those who are faithful to God's commandments and die to self will not give in. They count all things lost for the excellency of Christ. They would not be bribed, nor seduced, nor terrified. They were deaf to the siren song of pleasure, blind to the dazzling splendor presented before them, too confused to allure their senses. Worldly attractions, ambitions, honors were placed before them, but only to reject them. Here in Ezekiel we see these men at the location where the labor should be, yet instead of looking to enter the temple, we see these men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east, and they worship the sun towards the east. This location is where the laver is, between the tabernacle of congregation and the altar. The priests were required to wash in the laver before entering into the temple. 
So it is the same for us today, for we are the royal priesthood. We must wash daily. The washing at the laver represents daily baptism of dying to self, that we may enter into a daily relationship with Christ. For Christ said, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross daily, and follow me. Paul also spoke on this, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. All who refuse to die to self and enter in the sanctuary will take part in the greatest abomination. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares.